My Kitchen TV. And today I've got a special guest with me. He is the creator of the Harry the Big Dog live stream personal challenge. We did 100 live streams in 30 days. Harry, welcome to the broadcast. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay, so, so you know, I wanted to, to bring you on today because, you know, that was a pretty huge feat that, uh, you know, us chefs undertook. Now, all of us get down in the kitchen. And so I thought, how fitting would it be to have the conversation today of why it's important that you create content that makes you prominent inside of your space? Right. So we've had what there was four of us in there who so far, it's four, so people. four people that did this challenge and actually did the hundred lives in yes. in 30 days, 31 days. Yep. Yep. So that is beautiful. It was pretty phenomenal. It was pretty phenomenal. And, you know, not one of them skipped the beat. Uh, but here's the part that that I loved about it is that it not only uh, built everybody's confidence, including my own, and I've been live streaming for years, but I had been off of live streaming, you know, on a regular basis for about, mm, what, a good two solid years, two and a half, almost three. Wow. Yeah, it had been a moment because the last one I did was that 30 day challenge back in 2018. Yeah. And that was just like one video a day. It was not a hundred in a month. <laughs> that was yeah. that was uh that was when I was in retired mode and just in watched, retired mode. Watched, exactly. Go. Yeah, go, go, go. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, Danny Fortes, he says, What up? Hey Danny, how you doing? Hey Danny. So um here's the thing. You know, we we've got this challenge that happened and here's some of the things that i saw firsthand okay so we had chef shauna we had chef regina who threw their hat in the ring and chef shauna she started out i believe under 100 people on her facebook page yes she's now at 200 either i think almost 260 something somewhere mm. there. 30 days? 30 days, yeah. And that's the growth that you had organically? Yeah. Organically, that's organically. just- No ads. Right. Nothing, you know? And Chef Regina, she didn't even have a Facebook page until the second week into her live stream channel. Mm. And then she created it after going through one of your training videos. So she threw up her page. She didn't make it extra fancy or anything like that. She was like, okay, I got to get it up there, you know, and she got it up there <clears throat> and then started live streaming from her page. Yep. And so she's at eight, last I checked, she was at 80 followers, 78 um, subscribers or liked on the page. That was all organic. Yeah. And you talk about in, in two weeks or less. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that that's where, where uh, folks miss it when they look at, well, why should we go and do live streaming? What's the big deal? And the big deal is that <clears throat> when you really take it seriously and you're very intentional about it, you actually can grow not only your following, but you can grow your business. Now, Shauna, she is shipping her product all over the country. Regina is, uh, Chef Regina is having folks asking her, hey, you know, uh, can I get at that cake? You know, hey, can you bake me this and that the other? Although that's not really what she wants that's to do. That's not she what wants she wants to do. She, she doesn't want to do it at all. She wants to teach people, mm -hmm. you know, but can't help but notice that even though she doesn't want to do it, people are coming out of the woodwork asking her for it. So she's gotten the visibility. Yep. What do you think was the biggest catalyst to that? One of the things that, you know, this whole challenge 
in in my vision mm -hmm. did and does mm -hmm. it it gives you a, a practice feel right to start honing who you are and who you're gonna become mm -hmm. you get you get a hundred chances in a month yeah. to say okay i'm i'm weak here let me work on this for a couple of episodes. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm here. I want to get better here. Let me work on this. My mm -hmm. delivery is not so like, like we were talking about at the beginning of this, you know, behind the scenes about the intro. Absolutely. Some people don't know how to do an intro. Mm -hmm. And my earlier ones, Look, I was I had to remember how to do mine after a hundred. I'm like, okay. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you you just you know you get to practice and test out different things and then mm -hmm. build your confidence at the same time and then build content at the same time. Yep. <laughs> so this is like a, a threefold, three or fourfold thing. Absolutely. Now people are reaching out to you. You no longer have to 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 reach out to people. They're reaching out to you to do things mm -hmm. or to questions. Mm -hmm. or how you do this and mm -hmm. help me with this, depending mm -hmm. on what you're doing. You know, mm -hmm. the girls, they, I, I know they exploded with orders. <laughs> Absolutely. One, that's what she wants to do. And one that's, you know, it, it's right. it by default. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, I think the, the beautiful thing about this, I think it was the structure around it, because here it is, they jumped in without having any marketing experience, you know, they really didn't even didn't even know why they were doing the live stream other than their mentors told them to do it. Right. You know, which is great. I, I'm glad that they took the action and said, you know what, we don't have to understand. All we have to do is trust the process and then get it done. So they went in, got it done, and they saw the result. And now in talking with them on, okay, let's explain to you what you just did. And because of what you did, all of the things that can happen based on that. Right. We've got a hundred pieces of unique content now that would have taken them literally years to make. If they were to do a video a week, which not even, mo I can't even say that most people do that. Most people don't do a video a week, you know, but Add a video a week. It would have taken them. What was that number you came up with? Two years. Two years. He did two years worth of content. One is 52 weeks in a year. So mm -hmm. just under two years, 52 mm -hmm. weeks in a year. And mm -hmm. we did 100 video streams, yeah. live streams. Yeah. Two years yeah. worth of content in 30, 31 days. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think the thing that I love about this is that everybody kind of started out doing what they were going to do. And it was it was within a matter of days that. Okay. You, you get into your flow, you get into who you are and who you want to mm -hmm. be, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> early in early in my uh, interviewing career. Some people don't know, but I have a another show called DJ Interview. Which is I, a really good show, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it really, really is. Really. I DJ interview, uh, I interview DJs from all over the world. Mm -hmm. and you, you, um, w what you do is kind of read from script. Mm -hmm. And I found that to be robotic. And yeah. I tell people about this. I did it the first couple of episodes, and it was, you know, just like reading from something. Mm -hmm. Hi, what is your DJ name? How did you get your name? Blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. But then later on, as you see, as as we talked behind the scenes, mm -hmm. I my style is more conversational, and people are just eavesdropping into our conversation. Absolutely. So, and you know, I think I think that the, that part right there, and I want to I want to kind of hold on that for a moment. That part right there, when you found your voice and were completely in your flow, everybody else that came into your show 
they fed off of that relaxed nature of the show. Yeah. And then they were able to converse with you and forgot that the camera was even there. And then you all were just having a conversation, industry conversation, and talking about the nuances, the story behind what they were doing. Uh, you, you had a lot of uh, old heads in there, you know, folks who started out when hip hop became hip hop. Yeah. You were interviewing those folks. And I thought that that was pretty amazing. Once you locked into your own voice, you were able to attract that level of interviewee without having to do a whole lot of jumping through hoops. Right. Yeah. One of the things I was hearing at the beginning, oh, you should be like this person or you should be like that person. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, me not knowing, mm -hmm. I'm looking at these people, seeing how I can adapt their, their style, right. but it's, it's not me. So exactly. you have, you really have to get into your own style. Not yep. everybody likes it. <laughs> I tell other people all the time, I'm not the greatest talker. I don't use big words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the, the conversation, like you said, it just flows. Yeah. And I get people to that comfort level to where they don't see the camera anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talking, we're just having a conversation and the audience is coming in and, and saying, and then we'll make their comments. Yes. <laughs> Yes. You know, and, and by the way, um, Candace, Michelle, uh, just wonderful woman of God. She is a strategist. She puts together systems and funnels and all that. I, I've had the opportunity to pop over to her page. And so she's in the broadcast uh, right now. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, so she says, great, great strategy. And she says, uh, great strategy for content. Yeah, yeah I, I, I totally agree, Candace. Totally agree great strategy. And and here's the thing though. I think that when and and this is what I saw with everybody who uh, was a part of the direct 100 and then those who started doing their streaming uh because of it. Every person clicked over into value mode. I need to offer value to the marketplace. Mhm. Mm we got and one that just popped in here, Don. Mm -hmm. Don, Don was watching, and then you know, on one of our live streams, we was like, "Okay, Don, when are you gonna start yours? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get a date and a time." Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Hey, hey, Don. Yeah, and, and I mean, it, it makes a huge difference. Okay, so so let's kind of break this down. Let's unpack this. So we've got. Uh, for folks, you know, each one has to work out their own things. Okay. Right. There were some who had no intention of doing it. <laughs> okay. And then there were those who, who were hesitant and afraid of doing it, but they right. did it anyway. And that, that was one of the things they were, they hated video. Yeah. They hated yeah. being on video. Yeah. But after a few days, like we talked about mm -hmm. and they just got to a comfort level where mm -hmm. hitting go live was just natural. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and and there was like, it was within that first week where we saw them hit their stride. And their natural personalities came out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When Chef Shauna, the first time I saw her do this, I was like, okay, she she she's there. She's there. And then I started hearing stories from them saying like, if they didn't go live in a day or if they were late getting on and <laughs> people were waiting, they're like, hey, did, are you going live today? Like, what is the show start? Are you guys okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, that is such a powerful way to build community. You know, when Periscope first started, I started scoping, we used to call it scoping. And, you know, and that was multiple times a day. It was just, you know, there were those of us who were uh, the first starters, uh, the early adopters. Right. And that growth was pretty tremendous. I mean, in about a month and a half or so, 
maybe a couple of months, I had 5,500 followers, you know, just from live streaming. Mm -hmm. Because there's something about Periscope, though, that I thought was unique to all of the others. Periscope, it was about showing folks your world. And so what I saw happen in this live stream challenge was kind of like an ode to Periscope. It brought us back to that space to where it's like, okay, you know, there's no rules aside from the rules that you make for yourself. This is your personal live stream challenge. And when I saw you make that transition and you made everybody comfortable with that, you know, you're like, hey, this is this is my personal. And that's why I said personal. You know, you you reiterated that so that everybody kind of took ownership for themselves and saying, okay, well, I'm doing 100 doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do 100, but that's what I'm doing. That's my personal challenge to myself. And then everybody caught on. And then I think that that's when they made the real commitment. And it was a commitment that was for them, not because somebody was telling them to do it or because somebody else was doing it. It was, you know what? I'm making that commitment for myself and I'm going to grow my business in this way, using this vehicle. And yeah. that's what we started doing. Yeah. What, mm-hmm. what happens is when, when you make that mental transition, people mm-hmm. don't know you're using a software called Restream. Right. In the corner, there's a number that flashes. I wish mm-hmm. we could turn it off because my eyes get drawn to it all the time. Right. right. But there's a number of people who's viewing mm-hmm. and and a lot of people will get discouraged when they see that number and they see it at zero mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that's going to happen most of the time and then yeah. you get people that'll flow in and out mm-hmm. but that's where that's where the personal thing comes you you know you're no longer worried about who's watching anymore right and for the people that's watching the replay, mm-hmm. you know, this is good information to take in. Mm-hmm. You don't worry about who's watching because this is personal. This is a, a me thing. I mm-hmm. want to see, and you can be selfish with this. I want to mm-hmm. see if I can do this. Exactly, exactly. Not, not worry about, oh, nobody's on. Nobody wants to hear what I want to say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know what to say. Mm-hmm. Just get on, get on, and you know, a lot of times before this challenge, I would get on a live stream, and I didn't know what I was going to say until I hit that go live mm-hmm. button, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then it and just you know, starts the to beauty fall. of that though was that after doing that a few times, there was this thing that happened where that became okay. It's like, just get on there and talk, get on there and connect. Yeah. And that's what you're doing. You're being visible and you're connecting. You're letting mm-hmm. people know what you do, who mm-hmm. you are over time. Mm-hmm. You know what happened also in that? I mean, for me, um, <clears throat> I finally went ahead and got off of the, the throne, if you will, and <laughs> launched get in my kitchen TV. Right. Okay. Uh, and I remember the conversation that we had. You're like, all right, so Jason, are you, are you doing this? Or is this just like, and I was like, no, nah, yeah, I'm, I'm real I'm, like that, but you do yeah. need some accountability people yeah. Yeah. to to give you those hard questions. Yo, are you going to, are you serious about this? Or are you just, mm-hmm. gonna, you know, open it and then get out of there. Yeah. <laughs> get out yeah. of my kitchen. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, you know, um, there are some things that that I saw it. And you know what? I just realized I shared this into uh, the foodie community. So I've got to now talk about some food (laughs) because I was like, oh, I didn't mean to to, um, pop that in. I, uh, you know, it's force of habit. I've gotten so used to um, sharing Chef Shauna's and Chef Regina's things into the food community that it just hit me that, oh, wait a minute, I just shared this into the food community. Y'all don't ban me, don't ban me, okay? So I'm gonna talk about food just to make sure that you know that, okay, this is food related, but this is really talking about um, using mediums like live streaming in order to grow 
uh, a chef's business in order to um, you know, highlight different products to do reviews and things like that. There's so many ways that this platform can be used. And I'd, I'd love to see more people using it in order to build their business, especially in the lockdown situation. I don't know where what everybody else is doing in the country, in our state. They just did another lockdown. So, you know, everybody's wow. kind of homebound again. Yep. And, and so here it is, is that it's easy to look at the circumstances and to get discouraged, but I want to give a different twist on this. Instead of getting discouraged, take a moment and do like how Chef Shauna and Chef Regina did. You know, I, I got in the kitchen a few times, but but they really were in the kitchen, you know, baking cakes and cookies and, um, Given and the tips. yeah doing tips on food and all that and 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 shopping information i mean there's so many things so i want to encourage all of you who are in the food world okay like we are you know take this as as a opportunity to to better yourselves and to learn some things there's so many teaching tools out there right now on platforms like this where you can learn how to do a lot of things i mean harry he was teaching us how to make chicken feet, cow feet, you know. <laughs> we didn't actually get to see him do the pig's feet though, and we're all disappointed about that, but we did see the other ones. Yeah, I mean, you know, even though we do the marketing, mm -hmm. you know, I got my Ready Live Pro, mm -hmm. I love to cook too. Yeah, and tell and me I, something. And I like watching, watching shows that yeah, I made some barbecue turkey wings last night. Oh, you know, I'm, I, make it, I make it simple. Mm -hmm. It's not difficult. It's a mm -hmm. little time consuming because you know turkey wings takes time to to mm -hmm. cook. Mm -hmm. But I, I kind of you know <laughs> speed it up by putting them in a the pressure cooker. And you, oh oh wait, wait, which pressure cooker do you have? Do you have like the? I, I got the the XL Pro. Nice. Is that the Ninja or is that the um, the Power Power XL Pro? I don't know about that. Ah, oh, I've had that, that down. Years. You're holding out on me, bro. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna have to look at the. Oh, here it is. Yeah, okay. Power, Power XL, XL Pro. Pro. Yeah, I I use my new wave. Well, uh -huh. how, how I make my turkey wings uh -huh. is, uh. I'll, I'll put the turkey wings in the pressure cooker mm -hmm. with some some chicken stock or mm -hmm. beef stock or whatever mm -hmm. stock I have because they, mm -hmm. to me, they pretty much all taste the same. Right. And I let it go for about 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. Now, these are not the bigger turkey wings. These are the smaller turkey mm -hmm. wings. Mm -hmm. the, the wing portion. Now, does it crisp it up or is it kind of... No, no? It, it makes it and that's where the new wave comes in. Oh, now, now the new wave. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so after I take them out of the pressure cooker after mm -hmm. the 25 minutes and the pressure mm -hmm. kind of subsides, so I help it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I take them out of there. I let them drip dry. Mm -hmm. I make my my barbecue sauce mm -hmm. and I I like a dark barbecue sauce and a light barbecue sauce. Nice comment. And then I'll, you know, put some honey and seasonings in it, mm -hmm. and I'll spread them and put them in the new wave. Mm. And I'll, I'll let the new wave run for about fourteen minutes to mm -hmm. give it that that stiffness that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. let oh, let crisp it onto the meat. Yeah, nice. Okay, so now that we're talking about this, <laughs> let me tell you my my process. I have to say process in case my kids hear the, the replay because they'll say, Dad, you didn't say the word right. Okay, so in my process, I'll take the chicken, whether it's thighs, um, you know, and I don't eat a whole lot of meat or anything like that. You know, I'm mostly in, in the house. We're mostly vegan and all that. However, doesn't mean I can't throw down. I can throw down, right? <laughs> so I take the chicken and usually if I'm going to do the chicken, I'll do up like maybe about 18 pieces at once and I cook them down in the lasagna pan. And so I'll brine them first. And so I will season my brine. Um, Hold on. How do you do your brine? 
Because uh, people do it differently. Okay. So, so if that's that, that a Chinese secret. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, some of it is. So I could tell you this, but you're going to come up missing after I finish <laughs> telling you, okay? Just to let you know. Okay. Uh, so I, I take the, um, you know, salt, the water, um, the, uh, I use dill weed, dill seed, a um, little bit of oregano, sage, you know, like poultry seasoning, mm -hmm. uh, black pepper, corns, pe uh, peppercorns. I will uh, rough crush them, put those in there. Uh, I put a little bit of demerara sugar also. Okay. Uh, the salt that I use, I either use the uh, pink Himalayan salt or I'll use like the uh, kosher salt or the, you know, those are those are really good. Right. And um, and then I will take those and then I will bring it up to a simmer. Let it go for just a few minutes just to kind of like open it up. And then I will put a bunch of ice into it to shock it, cool it down real fast. And then I start adding the chicken in when it's nice and cold. Mm -hmm. And so I, and uh, before I add the chicken in, I will wash the chicken down, lemon, some vinegar, you know, all of that water. Uh, and then I add it into the brine. I will let it sit for a minimum of eight hours. Usually it's overnight. So it'll be like 10 to 12 hours. I pull it out, you know, pat it dry. And then I will dry rub it with some uh, seasonings, okay? I do have a special blend of seasonings that I can't tell anybody. It is a secret <laughs> recipe. Come on, come on. Just yeah, <laughs> you're like, okay, just do that. Give me a little bit of it. <laughs> it's, it's just us, Jason. Just us. Okay. <laughs> so I'll take that, but this is what I like to do. I'll do a compound butter, okay? So, and, and that could be anything, sage, compound, uh, rosemary, garlic, whatever. Uh, I like to do a mixture of garlic, sage, um, oregano, dill. I'm a dill fanatic. And so I'll take the compound butter and I put it underneath the skin, in between the skin and the meat. Mm. And then I put it into the lasagna pan, you know, stack them all in there so they're like, you know, nice and snuggly. Right. And then I will take three whole tomatoes and strategically place them in the pot, in the, in the pan. <laughs> I will add uh, garlic cloves. Uh, I will add onions that I have like cut into eighths or whatever. Just, you know, put them over the, um, the pan, you know, uh, distribute them. Yeah. And then I cover it up. Now you gotta be careful though, because if you cover it up with aluminum, the tomatoes are going to eat right through that aluminum. So you don't want to do that. You know, if you do that, you want to put some parchment or something on top and then the aluminum to seal it in so it doesn't eat through the aluminum. And then I started out at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, half hour. The next half hour is 250 degrees Fahrenheit. And then after that, for about four to six hours, depending, I will have it at 170 degrees. It's almost like like a sous vide, but not a sous vide. But there's mm -hmm. all this juice that's now in the pan, and it's just rolling around. And I turn it meat side down in order to get it nice and tender. Right. And then I'll flip it back over, and then let the top part cook and all that. Let the bottom part get into the juices, and then I'll flip the broiler on for about three to five minutes. When it's done to crisp up the skin so it's not all runny. Right. See, you, I, I would have went to the Chinese restaurant because that no, takes you off for me. No, you wouldn't have, because <laughs> after you taste I would have had to wait till after you finished. Yep. <laughs> not the whole process. And, and you would have done, you done yourself well to do that because <laughs> let me tell you something. Once you taste that chicken, you will take the time to do it from that point forward. It will spoil you because the chicken is so tender. You can literally pull the bone out and it's clean. Yeah. And the seasoning soak into the bone. You can chew the bone down and the bone is flavorful. True mm. story. True story. Tender. Everything I'm, is tender. I'm more of the quicker meal 
makers, even though I take my time with certain mm -hmm. things, some mm -hmm. things, you know, it, it take like the, the cow foot mm -hmm. or beef feet as they call it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, Don said game over. Absolutely, Don. Yes. <laughs> Don was saying the, the 11 herb, herbs and spices, your secret. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but um, like the the cow foot, mm -hmm. you have to put that in a slow cooker. Mm -hmm. I've seen recipes where it says, you know, five hours. Mm -hmm. If you well, you've got the pressure cooker, though. Yeah. yeah. I, no, I but the flavor's different in a pressure cooker. Mm. And it is in a different better or different worse. It's different. different. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because you're gonna pull out different. different properties when you when you do even with the pressure and the speed of it. Yeah. It's it's just okay. really different. Like oxtail, yeah. I, I like oxtails too, and I make mm -hmm. my oxtails. You know, if if I'm in a more of a hurry, I'll do it in a pressure cooker. But mm -hmm. lately, I've been doing it in the pot with, mm -hmm. like like we were saying some things take their time so right. you know you, you're talking two and a half to three hours mm -hmm. of, of low cooking mm -hmm. low fire mm -hmm. yeah or low heat depending yeah. on where you live in a country <laughs> right and and it just tastes so much better mm -hmm. i don't know what it is like you know yeah. everything infuses correctly yeah, it, 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 you you take the time to allow the food to do what it's supposed to do. I think what happens is that we just get in such a rush, you know, we, we rush ourselves through the food. And then what ends up happening is that we end up, I mean, I, I know folks who don't even know what real food tastes like because that's all they know is the convenient. The microwave. <laughs> yeah, the microwave, the fast food, or when they're in their home, um, they don't season the food, which can't for the life of me figure that one out, you know? See, I used to be like that. I used really? to like all my stuff bland, wow. but then, you know, I got with the wife and she likes seasoned stuff. Mm -hmm. so I had to- oh, Thank God for Robin. I, I, I had to, <laughs> to, to, you know, come to a, 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 a Happy area where- yeah. It was my taste and her taste because mm -hmm. she used to like, you know, well seasoned. Right. And I liked none. So we now, had somewhere in the middle. Okay. So even on like the meats and stuff, no seasoning? You would just eat it just like that? I saw my seasoning. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> well I mean, that is well, very little seasoning, too. Uh -huh. So no marinating, no, um, really? Oh. Now, now, yeah. sometime I uh -huh. do when when I'm like a I like fried chicken. So mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. I know way in advance, mm -hmm. I'll brine my wings. Mm -hmm. You know, simple salt and sugar and water. Mm -hmm. Let it sit for overnight, and what it comes your, out. And what it is your favorite? You you talked about dark sauce and light sauce. What is your favorite? Um, Favorite sauce, whether it's something that you make or something that you buy or a combination. And what do you use it on? My favorite is the darker one. <laughs> and uh, yes, Regina, I put, I put hot sauce out. on everything too. <laughs> my my favorite is the the darker. The, it depends uh -huh. on what I'm eating. Mm -hmm. But I do like the darker one for like my oxtails, my chicken feet. But mm -hmm. I do like the lighter versions of sauce mm -hmm. um, with my turkey wings. Yes. When I do it that style. Mm -hmm. And and it depends when I'm cooking oxtails or, or chicken feet or something. I use cornstarch and gravy master. Mm -hmm. the dark. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I could see that. Um, I stopped using the cornstarch, though, uh, only because, I mean, it, it has its pluses, but I think that the, the, I, I prefer the uh, tapioca, which isn't that much better. Mm -hmm. long. Okay, I mean, I mean, they both do similar things. I just think that we're just 
overly corned and overly weeded in our society. You know, we get too much of it. Um, but yeah, that, that flavor tastes good to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it does taste good. Like, uh, especially when you have the orange beef or the orange chicken and they use that to make the sauce and to thicken it and all of that. And it gives that nice gravy kind of, yeah, yeah. I mean, I won't refuse it if, you know, it's handed to me. I don't want to be rude, <laughs> but I'm just saying that, you know, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, have you ventured off into things that are uh, off the beaten path? I know that you would like are a meat eater. You probably, you know, can eat a cow as it's in stride, you know? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. So have you ventured off the beaten path and gone with anything that's like plant-based and for any prolonged period of time? And if so, what happened? One time, like every year, mm -hmm. I used to do uh, a couple of months of no meat just mm -hmm. to reset the body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think we, we had a conversation the other day about uh, I used to do for the month of January every mm -hmm. year mm -hmm. I a, a full detox, a yeah. full cleanse for the mm -hmm. 30 days. Mm -hmm. Like a, a body oil change, <laughs> if you will. Yep. And in that time, and then beyond that, I didn't eat any type of meats. It was just mm -hmm. vegetable, cabbages, and and you know your regular vegetables, carrots, celery, all that good stuff. So was that something that you read about, or you just had this inclination to do that one day? How did I, you just come to doing that reset? I just. Uh, it was a combination of of both things, mm -hmm. and and wondering, you know, like your car, your body needs an oil change too, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and good, good, all, all the stuff good, that, that stays in your system. And mm -hmm. I'm you know, I'm wondering if that causes anything later in life. All mm -hmm. them, all them things that's in your your gut for all them years, and they yeah. never got flushed out. Yeah. Yeah. Could that why you know people come up with diseases later on in life or in mm -hmm. their 50s or 60s? Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons why I did it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then there there were times where the first five days of the month was no meat. Wow. And how long how long was that? Was that um I mean when did you start that? I should say. How 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 long have you been doing that? Was that from I, 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 or was that I before? Away, yeah, I got away from it a couple of years ago. Okay, but that's been going. I I've been doing that from the early two thousands up until about two, maybe three years ago. Mm -hmm. Where I just okay. kind of stopped. Huh. But I do eat more vegetables nowadays i don't um, watch, watch what i eat because i see you know as you get older you get more ailment ailment mm -hmm. you know your your diabetes your your you know prostate stuff and now I, i'm aware reading labels and knowing you know don't eat that chinese food every day like mm -hmm. you do three times mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, to the Chinese restaurant now, uh, maybe once every month, once every mm -hmm. five weeks, because you 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 get those cravings. And and what what inside of the uh, Chinese uh, restaurant, like what impacted your system the the most? Meaning. Meaning, like, you know, because you said, like, okay, you can't eat that, like, daily and all that. I always thought or was always told that when you deal with, you know, Chinese food, that it's very healthy because they stir fry and this, that, and the other. And I was like, okay, well, I guess it depends on the oil that's being all used. Of, all of oils and, and mm -hmm. all of the fried chicken. You know, I get mm -hmm. the bad stuff. I don't I don't go for the, the steamed broccoli and, and white rice, steamed white rice. Right. I go for the for the fried rice with the 
with the pork in it and and chicken wings that's fried. I go uh -huh. for that stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's why I only eat it one once every in a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was from my New York days, you know. That mm -hmm. that's where we went to the Chinese restaurant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got things, but you know now knowing as you're older. It's a lot of things you cannot eat like that mm -hmm. constantly because right. your body is not, you're not as active as you were before for, mm -hmm. for some of us. Mm -hmm. Well, know. I'm as active as I ever was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or, or live, live, live streaming. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, Don yes. is saying the MSG is even okay in moderation. Right. And a lot of stuff is is good, in my opinion. Look, I can't do the MSG. When I get any MSG in my system, it messes me up so bad. I didn't know that until one day I isolated it because I was like, I was eating this food, and um, I never knew that. Remember that that um, what was that thing that they had a commercial with? I think accent or whatever. I didn't know that that's all that was, was MSG. Mm -hmm. And so I remember I was at a friend's house and so they were cooking and so they threw that into the food and whatnot. So, I mean, it was good, it tasted great. Mm -hmm. And all I knew was that <clears throat> I woke up and my muscles felt like plastic. I couldn't <laughs> bend my head and I was like, what's going on? And then I, I realized, you know, every time that I would have something over there or have that stuff with the accent or the MSG, I would have a reaction. So I was like, okay, yeah, I can't do the MSG. You know? and, it, and it's like that for some people, mm -hmm. but the majority of the people, they can eat it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, ooh. yeah, most people can eat it. It's, mm -hmm. it's your few that, that don't eat it mm -hmm. and not eat it because mm -hmm. it does some bad reactions to them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So tell me something. Um, what do you see moving forward? Okay, you were now taking a substance that you swore you would never take. <laughs> the sea <the C> moss. <laughs> right. Okay, so what's the experience like? And is it something that you can now live with? I mean, tell me about it. I mean, you, you like that you would have thought that that was like a stake in you or Dracula, you know, like, you know, stay away. The, so what's it been like for you? It's it the it's still out there because mm -hmm. I'm only this is like day ten mm -hmm. that I've been taking it. Mm -hmm. I when I initially started taking it, it made me feel horrible. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, is this supposed to do that? <laughs> but you know, in talking to you and talking to the wife, mm -hmm. it was like you know, it may be stuff that it's cleaning out, right? <laughs> Right. I'm like, okay, I'm going to stay with it for a month mm -hmm. and see how it does. Mm -hmm. so day 10. So I got about 20 more days to really see if it did anything. Mm -hmm. it, it's not as messy it, it not, it's not as tiring as it was the first like four days. Right. Cause I was like out of it, you know, by eight o'clock PM Eastern mm -hmm. time. American time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good but morning, now. Shauna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Shauna. Hey, Dave. Yeah. Hey, Dave. How's it going? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so, all right. So you got 20 more days to, to kind of give it the, uh, the college try. Yeah. Okay. So after the 20, are you saying that's it 20 and I'm done or 20 and no, I'm done? And after the 20 days, it's evaluation, you know, okay. what, okay. what did it done? Am I feeling any better? Mm -hmm. Am I, if, if, is my joints loosening up? Mm -hmm. Am I more active? Do I have more energy? I'm, this mm -hmm. is the stuff that I'm looking for. Cause these are the things that I've heard mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. do. And then I may go another 30 days just to. I check. think that would be a great idea. And you know what? Okay, I'm gonna give you a challenge. It's a foodie challenge, but see how many things you can incorporate it in and mask the flavor. Mm. 
so far I was just I just do that. I have like a cup of hot water every mm -hmm. morning before I eat anything. Mm -hmm. a cup of hot water with lemon in it. Mm -hmm. so I started putting the sea moss in it too. Mm -hmm. Initially it was a different taste, but you know, after a day or two, you get used to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. That'll be something different. Because I mm -hmm. like I like my teas. I'm allergic to coffee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's been three years, seven months, and twenty-six days, but who's counting? Right. <laughs> and um I th that'll be interesting to see. Because we make yeah. we make our own here the same. Uh -huh. Oh know? uh you, what okay, let me understand this. You make your own CMOS? Yeah. I mean uh the news flash. Yeah. Probably not CMOS then. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we we mix our stuff up here. Oh, okay, okay. Because I'm like, <laughs> you know, I mean I know you all are skilled, <laughs> but <laughs> Special, or, special yeah. ponds, <laughs> right? Like, bro, that's that's algae. <laughs> we blend our stuff here, right? Right. Yeah. Now, one thing I heard, it, it doesn't have a good shelf life, so you have to get rid of it as soon yeah. as. Possible. I think it's like I think it's got like two weeks or something. Yeah. Two, yeah. two to three weeks is what I heard. Yeah, see, and I wouldn't push it to the third week. That's just me, because if something has two to three, I'd venture on the side of the one and a half to maybe two. Hey, you, so I'm you, like, you, okay, so what happens after the two? Like, does it like rapidly go downhill? And if that's the case, was it kind of rapidly going downhill already and I just didn't know about it? See, that's so, what I want to test yeah. out. Yeah, see, I get skeptical like that. So I have to mix mine up and drink it. <laughs> I can't have it sitting around because I don't know. I don't know enough about it to know when they say two to three weeks. Some people will say, oh, no, this is fine. And they're eating spoiled food and they don't care. They don't know. So, <laughs> see, yeah. That, that's me. <laughs> yeah. So I, I can't do it. My, my psyche doesn't allow me to do it. Three days max for me of something in the fridge, maybe four. <laughs> if it's something that has a good high acid content or it's like fermented like sauerkraut or something like that, I can deal with that in the fridge because I just know that it's not going to grow anything in there. Right. Stuff? <laughs> Shauna's saying, oh, no, CMOS, tell me how it works. <laughs> John, we'll we'll keep you constantly. updated on it. <laughs> Yeah. So, all right. So now, okay, so we, we've done this. Uh, and Shauna, you and Regina might have had your ears burning because we were talking about you all uh, at the beginning of this of this conversation. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just eat around the bass. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, so what do you right have, I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, what, what are your thoughts now moving forward? What do you think that uh, folks inside of the food world can use this platform to do? I mean, do you have to be a chef to do it? What if you're in some other aspect of the food world? What if you're a food grower? Could you do something like this? Yes. Okay. It, it, what you're really doing is showing people what you do. Mm-hmm. I know some people are scared to get on camera. Mm -hmm. You know, most people hate their voice. I cannot stand my voice. I'm I'm with you there. But you have to get over yourself. Right. You know, it's not for you. You don't have mm -hmm. to be all dapper. You don't have to have a beautiful afro like this every day. You know, it's a hassle taking care of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, just being yourself and being comfortable with who you are. Mm -hmm. you, know, you don't shy away from your friends who know you, from your family who know you, but to True. get on here, people shy away. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's the wrong thing to do, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. you know, let people see who you are. Right. It doesn't matter. <laughs> that's good. That's you good. know, and, and I think what you can do is show people what you do. Mm -hmm. And it could help a lot of people too. I watch a lot of stuff on on cooking, on 
you know, different various things. I take a few, uh, about 30 to 45 minutes every morning mm -hmm. and YouTube and, and just look for things. I, I want to get into this indoor planting. I mean, indoor gardening, yeah. not, but indoor gardening. Mm -hmm. And I'm mm -hmm. seeing it's, it, it takes some space. It takes some, some good lighting because mm -hmm. you need, you need your constant light. Mm -hmm. The temperature would be good because it's a constant in your house. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to live like, you know, you're, you're out in the elements and it's, mm -hmm. when it's hot, it, it, it starts raining in your house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, you know, in, in doing these live streams, you're just letting the world know what you do and helping a lot of people. And it's right. not about you when you take that out, that it's about you and how you look and <sighs> mm -hmm. done better than perfect. I love that saying. I love that saying. You know, before I used to have a, a bit of a challenge with it because, you know, of course, I was being Mr. Perfectionist, but drilling that into my brain has helped me to move forward in areas where I would stop and tweak and tweak and tweak. It's got to be perfect before I put it out there. And it wasn't until I realized, you know what, perfect, that's subjective anyway, because my perfect is going to be different than somebody else's perfect. So all the time that I'm sitting there trying to perfect something, whoever needs what I've got can't get it. Right. And then they have a different idea of what's perfect. Their idea of what's perfect is what works for them. And so long as I hold on to this thing without releasing it, they don't have use of it. So it can't be perfect for them, no matter how much I perfect it. Mm -hmm. you know? So I, I love that having the challenge where we had to just continually stay on task to get the videos done, it didn't leave a whole lot of time for us to perfect anything. It, it was enough time for us to get really ultra relevant and figure out how are we going to benefit those who take the time to watch what we're doing, mm -hmm. you know? And if they can come away with some actionable steps, some inspiration, some ideas or things like that, then the mission out. accomplished. <laughs> yep. And, and that's what you ultimately want. Mm -hmm. You're just relaying what you know how to do. Don, Shauna, yeah, you know, um, Regina, mm -hmm. Chris. Mm -hmm. You're relaying what you what you know. Yeah, and and hoping you inspire somebody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be the the most polished talker. You don't right. have to be. You know, you know. You guys beat that into my head because mm -hmm. I think I talk so bad. I pause sometime. I'm getting this stutter when I don't know what's what needs to come out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's that's y'all y'all said that's you, <laughs> and people like that, and they see now that they don't have to be polished. They don't yeah. have to be a news anchor where yeah. everything, all the lighting, you know, you yeah. got your tie, you got your makeup on, you got a hairstylist. Yeah. So when you go on the break, you know, you're you're just dapper all the time. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And exactly. don't to cut that camera on like like Shauna does. Mm -hmm. You go back to Walmart and you just flick the camera on. Yeah. Hey, this is where I am. I just wanted to show you guys this clearance section or mm -hmm. you know, something. And, you, and you're, you're taking them into your world. You, you're bringing them into your world. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're doing. And your world may be similar or different from somebody's. Right. Maybe interesting, maybe not interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it depending on it, it just depends on what you're doing. Sometimes my setup here is for my my DJ interview. Sometimes it's for my my Ready Live Pro mm -hmm. people. Yeah, it, it's it's for different things. Yeah. You know, I'm setting this up on perfect, but it always wasn't like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, not on perfect on purpose. I'm setting it up like this now mm -hmm. because I'm I'm doing this more often. But for the casual person.
person, you know, start off with what you got. Most people only have this, right? You know, set it up. Many of productions with just that alone. Set it up on something, you know, in the in the Foodie Channel, you can show people how to grow something, how to, Mm -hmm. you know, harvest something, how Mm -hmm. to cook something, Mm -hmm. how to make quick meals. I'll be watching those. of the quicker meal things but Mm -hmm. you know you you have like sean and regina they they showed from start to finish Mm -hmm. how you make certain things some Mm -hmm. videos short and some of them are longer Mm -hmm. but when you're when you're really into it and you want to know it the you know that 45 minutes to an hour seems really really short absolutely and it's kind of funny how that happens because you know initially it it seems like how in the world am i going to get past a minute or three minutes or five minutes worth of content once you get into your flow you have to figure out how do i cut this thing down yeah because there really is so much to talk about where you don't have to repeat yourself and it's good quality content you know when you are delivering content that helps people to do what they want to do to better themselves in some way, shape or form. And you know that you're being of service. You really want to give it all. And you have to like, you know, pull the reins back on yourself to make sure that you don't overfill folks with stuff. Because yeah. you know, that's probably just as bad or may, maybe even worse, yeah. overwhelming folks because it's like, okay, now I see all this stuff that I got to do. There's no way I'm going to get this done. But if you give it to them in bite-sized pieces, let me give you some actionable steps right here. If I'm teaching you how to cook, you know, like how I went over my methodology on brining and, and baking mm-hmm. chicken, right? Now, I think anybody can get a visual, especially if they've done any stuff in the kitchen. It's like, oh, okay, so 350, 250, 170. It's pretty straightforward, you know? But I know that if they apply that, they will change the way that they experience chicken, turkey, any of the poultry for life. They probably will never go back to what they used to do because quite frankly, it's gonna taste like dog food in comparison. I'm just saying. No, you you are absolutely right. I I used to like the quick grits and 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 the quick oatmeal. You tasted the real stuff. I tasted the grits Mm-hmm. The regular ones that take 30, 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. And I never went back to no quick, mm-hmm. nothing quick, even with your oatmeals. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I don't mess with the quick stuff because it, it, it doesn't have the flavor. You have to add so much stuff to it to bring it up to what the other yeah. stuff naturally has. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And it takes, it takes a little longer, but, you know, I see what you're, with your, with your chicken. You know, mm-hmm. it takes a you have that that um, bone broth, all all of that that just melts into the pan, and all that flavor is just infused in every fiber of that chicken. It's an amazing experience. Yeah, my and next crisp it up. My next thing to learn is how to do that bone broth and canning. I want to learn how to do the canning. I got. S- two or three pots mm-hmm. and my pressure cooker can, yeah. do, can do the canning. Oh, nice. I nice. just don't yeah. know. I've got some it. videos to share with you then. Yeah. 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 I've got some really good ones. By the way, if you are sitting here listening to our conversation, if this is remotely interesting to you, if you're a foodie, you're still here <laughs> uh, and on the replay. But if you were ever considering either A, growing your skill set, going through a personal development challenge, if you want to build your business, if you just want to improve your speaking skills, you know, the live streaming can do all of that. And when you do 100, you remove all excuses as to why you can't get certain things done because your brain literally goes into critical thinking skill mode. Like I've got to solve this dilemma because I've got to get a hundred out in this amount of time. How will I do it? And you get very creative with it. 
And you find your voice somewhere in there to where you're able to get on camera, speak as if you're talking to a person, even though you're looking at this glass, you know, lens. <laughs> with, 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 with blue lights with on the side. Lights on the side, exactly. <laughs> but there's something that happens to where you take ownership of your voice and you connect with folks through the camera and you have real talk. And so it translates out beautifully when you're teaching folks because you take your time, there's no rush, nothing to be nervous about. You're there to make sure that they've got what they need in order to take advantage of the steps that you're laying out for them. And so when you're encouraging folks, when you're giving a, a motivational speech or an inspirational one, you take your time again because you know that whether you're looking in the camera or the person sitting right in front of you or you're dialoguing with them, you've got to get this information to them because it's critical to their well-being. Mm -hmm. So everything that you do on live stream when you're doing it successfully and not getting caught up in, you know, folks say, oh, you should not go more than five minutes or 10 minutes tops. You have to break it I down. Like that. Stand that. I cannot stand that. I don't have no time limits on anything because, you know, that if, if you set a 30 minute mark, we're going to be here for 30 minutes. Right. And at 29 minutes, the conversation mm -hmm. start getting good. Right. You telling me you're going to cut this off because right. you have a 30 minute stipulation? Mm -hmm. Sorry, <laughs> that's the time. People yeah. are going to be like, ah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Especially when that connection has been made. Mm -hmm. the pe people are leaning in, and then you just shut it down. And not even like you shut it down, and you're like, okay, we'll be back with part two. You shut it down, and then that guest is gone. Yep. And if you get them back, it's going to be when the conversation is no longer relevant. So, you know, get it while you I can. Yeah, I get that. I, I I I I don't like when I'm involved in a conversation and feel like I'm really getting some good stuff out of it and contributing in that engagement. And that's another thing. If if you're watching and you don't engage, what happens? What that tells the the um, content creator is that maybe the topic isn't grabbing you. So then they may prematurely end the conversation because they don't know where you're at with that. You know, so <laughs> Don yeah. is making a Dallas so reference. The person that shot JR is the person that shot the exactly. Yeah. Man, I remember that. A whole season to see. I remember that. I was in Detroit when that happened. Yeah. <laughs> I was in Detroit. I remember that. Yeah. Funny. Yeah. And, but also, you know, bootleg enough what you're saying, mm -hmm. you have to know when to cut it off and not yeah. just start using filler words because you think it's supposed to go this long. You had a lot of ands and uhs yeah. and, 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 um, and, or the, 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 <laughs> the, the. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So it, it, yeah. it's the thing. That's why I don't have no time stipulation on, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. when I'm doing my interviews on, on my other show, mm -hmm. they ask me, how long is it? I say, mm -hmm. as long as you want or as short as you want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's, That's it. it. Some people, some people don't get into a flow mm -hmm. because they, they're staring at the camera and maybe nervous. Mm -hmm. A lot of the DJs that I interviewed, it was their first time being interviewed. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. And and like it you was said, amazing. it it yeah. it was in it was in a you know they've they've been in the business for over 40, 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. It's your first time ever. So there's a nervousness mm -hmm. and, and your job, you know, we happen mm -hmm. to have interviewers on on here right now. Right. But your job is to make that person so comfortable that they forget about the camera. They forget, you know, you're you even online streaming to seven different places. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and just, you know, have that conversation. It's a personal conversation. Yeah. yeah. So all, all you foodie guys, you know, you, you can do that. Absolutely. And and that goes for any anything you're doing how to how to make how to make mugs yeah oh yeah, yeah. You, you do a real good class on that yeah so 
<laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna put this out there, Harry. I'm gonna put this out there. Uh, for those of you who are watching, and if you're a foodie, if you're a chef, a uh, food professional, what have you, I would like to interview you for Get In My Kitchen TV. So comment inside of the comment area and you know tag me in it. Let me know uh, if you are somebody who really loves food. You, you really love to talk about it, to troubleshoot, to you know, help people navigate through the kitchen and all that, you know, that's the conversation I want to have in this space. Mm -hmm. So I want you to reach out to me, uh, visit SWIY.io forward slash G I M K T V dash like. Okay. And that stands for get in my kitchen TV. I want you to go there, make sure you like the page and um, participate because this page is going to grow. Uh, and we want to provide a really good space for culinarians, for food professionals, for folks to really be able to relax and enjoy and to learn a lot about the food world. Okay. Harry, how can folks get in contact with you? You know, how can folks get involved in a challenge like this? Tell us. They can get in contact with me by talking really loud. If you, <laughs> if you talk loud enough, I could hear you <laughs> even through this internet. <laughs> but um, you can you can contact me on my my Ready Live Pro. It's readylivepro.com forward slash FB page. You can get in contact with me. And, and I just wanted to bootleg off of something Jason said about him wanting to be, want, wanting to get people to interview. You know, Chris Gloss, he has a page called Step Out of Comfort Zone. So for those of you who are on the fence and, and a little nervous about, you know, should I, should I do something like that? Step out of your comfort zone. No, nobody's gonna laugh at you. Nobody's gonna, you know, you get you'll you'll get more of an applause, even acknowledging, hey, I'm nervous here. This is my first time doing this. So you guys step bear with me. Comfortzone.com. Step, step out of step, step out, out comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Step step out comfort zone .com uh -huh. is Chris's gloss, Chris Gloss's uh site. And he talks about a lot, and we talk about a lot of stepping out of your comfort zone and just getting out of your own way. Mm -hmm. And and done is better than perfect. You'll hear that term a lot because yeah. sure we've lost out on a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You know, being a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. While you watch other people who who are not polished. They, they don't even know how to speak English halfway. Don't even know as much as you know. Right. Don't yeah. know as much as you know, but they're they're on there. They're selling a product and people are buying it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and you're looking like, ah, I wouldn't have did it that way. I wouldn't yeah. have. Come but on. You didn't do anything. And you, you didn't do anything. Yeah. So get yeah. out of that comfort zone. You know. That that's that's what I want to end off. <laughs> nice, Get nice. out of the comfort zone. There you go. OK, so there you have it, folks. Uh, you know, pop on over, uh, visit our partner, Chris, at stepoutcomfortzone.com. And then make sure that you like the page, engage in it. He always has some great topics on there, great interviews. And it's all around folks who have stepped out of their comfort zone, folks who have face their fears and done what they were put here to do anyway, you know, make sure that you do visit the readyliveprocom forward slash FB page. And that's Harry's page. And you'll see a lot of the live streams that we did. You'll see a lot of the interviews and there's a lot of great golden nuggets in those interviews. You, you have people from all different walks of life, different disciplines and things like that. And you are hearing their story, hearing how they came to where they are in their life, you know, and then, of course, make sure that you um, pop on over to SWIY.io 
forward slash G-I-M-K-T-V dash like. And that'll take you over to the Get In My Kitchen TV on Facebook. Go ahead, like that page. And, uh, you know, we're going to have more content like this. We're going to have a lot more food demonstrations. Matter of fact, there's quite a few food demonstrations on there right now. Thanks to Chef Shauna of Shauna's Sweet Spot uh, and Chef Regina of Regina's Baking, uh, Baking Academy. So visit them, uh, Shauna's Sweet Spot and Regina's Baking Academy here on Facebook as well. Excellent information, excellent training. If you are a foodie, you need to be in those spaces. Okay, so on that note, I am the Jason Hodge, creator of Get In My Kitchen TV, media planner, producer, publisher. And this is Harry the Big Dog, creator of the Harry the Big Dog 100 live stream personal challenge. 30 days, 100 live streams will change your world. So we will see you all later. Thank you for taking the time with us. And if you are catching this on replay, I know I said that late, pop in replay. <laughs> you have to wait until you get to the end of that to know to do that. But pop in replay. All right. Catch you all later. Have a good one.